vehicle. We started that a little over an hour ago. As you can see, we only look about half of the vehicle fully frosty. As for a static fire, we do a full, just about a full load of the liquid oxygen and only a partial load of the, uh, the fuel, that liquid methane on board. That's all we need for a static fire test. As of this moment, we are in a hold at the T minus 40 second mark. This is a planned hold. We're just gonna hold here while we wait for the fuel temperatures to get to a desired range before we resume the countdown. Once we see everything in the right range, we'll get ready to start counting down. We'll get the clock up and it'll start rolling from T minus 40 seconds. Again, this is the, the second time we've static fired with this booster, uh, the Super Heavy, the first stage of our Starship launch vehicle, the most powerful rocket ever designed, ever flown. Not looking to lift off today, just looking to ignite those engines on the bottom. This is a critical test before you get ready to go fly. This is really your chance to put everything together. Uh, all of the different systems on board the rocket, propellant handling, the, the engines themselves, all of the ground support equipment, all of our operators who are gonna be responsible for flying this vehicle with Starship on top during that next flight. Uh, this, this test is really, uh, tying everything together and is in the critical path before we get ready to go to launch. In addition to everything on the rocket, again, you have a lot of the ground support hardware that is going to be involved today. We're going to once again be using the flame deflector underneath. So you've seen that tested a handful of times, both with and without the rocket. We used it during the first static fire with Booster 9 a couple of weeks ago. Uh, so once we resume the count, Again, it'll be about T minus 40 seconds. We'll see the flame deflector fire up about 10 seconds before ignition. So when you see the water start to flow, you know we're about 10 seconds away. But so far, it's been a pretty clean count so far today. Haven't been tracking any issues. Uh, and we're still, again, right now we're at a hold. This was a planned hold in today's operation. We just want to make sure we got fuels at a desired temperature range before we resume that final countdown. And so with static fire, we're looking to do what's called a flight-like startup. So this is us putting the hardware in essentially a flight-like environment as close to what it's going to see on an actual launch day. And this really gives you an opportunity to see how all the hardware behaves when it's all interacting together. Uh, where we tweaked some of the startup sequence from the last time we did a static fire as we just continue to fine tune, learn about the hardware as we put it through the paces and fine tune, make our operations just as we get ready to uh, get on to flight number two. But again, we are still holding at T minus 40 seconds. We'll hold here for a little bit longer, still watching the temperatures on those fuels. Once we're in a desired range, we'll see the clock come back up and we will start counting down. And again, this is, you're gonna see a lot of the different systems that will be there on flight day really, really working together. So uh, we've got obviously everything on board the booster. As I said, we're not, not looking to lift off when we do a static fire. You only uh, throttle th those engines up to about 50% of their thrust. It is kind of cool to note, though, that even at just 50% power, a Super Heavy has more thrust than a Falcon Heavy at full power. So uh, Super Heavy packs a, a pretty big punch uh, when it's at full thrust, and we'll see it there uh, once we actually get to a launch day. But you only ramp up to about 50% uh, of the total thrust on those engines. And hearing some good news, sounds like our clock has started to roll. So we are less than 40 clock seconds Clock is rolling, T minus 30 seconds. From static fire, T minus 30 seconds and counting. Ten. Five, four, 
three, two, one, ignition. Plus one, two, full duration. Booster 9, static fire, fleet. Rattled the, rattled the walls here uh, over at, uh, over at Starbase, but uh, we did hear the, the call out of full duration. At this point, uh, the teams can start going through the data, look at uh, how many engines fired, how all the tanks behaved, everything, but uh, great to see Booster 9 lighting up down here in South Texas once again. We did hear that call out from the, the flight director for today's operation that we hit a full duration. We were targeting about a six second firing of those engines, uh, but booster nine static fire number two complete. All right, well, as I said, now's the time when we can uh, essentially start to safe the vehicle. We'll start to offload the prop and then the teams can get right into looking at the data uh, and see how that static fire went. We heard full duration. We'll share some additional information as it comes in. Uh, I know everybody is excited to hear how many engines lit. We'll get that data and share that a little bit later. Uh, but everything went off today. Uh, with that, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Thanks for, for tuning in for some more development testing here with Starship. Uh, definitely a reminder that a lot of space operations still coming this weekend. We're getting ready to launch Crew-7 to the International Space Station. Uh, that coming in the early hours Eastern time tomorrow. And we'll have a Starlink launch, uh, assuming that gets off the pad, a Starlink launch later on Saturday night. So. Be sure to stay tuned in to us on social, on the, on the web for progress updates uh, with everything down here at Starbase and Starship as we continue the march on to flight number two. So thanks for tuning in real quick this afternoon. I'm SpaceX, SpaceX's Dan Hewitt, uh, and we'll see you next time at the Gateway to Mars.